Greetings, I'm Mark Andrus speaking to the Episcopal Diocese of California, which is the Episcopal Church in the Bay Area, San Francisco, and the counties around it. I'm speaking on the eve of Holy Week and Easter to all of you faithful people who are doing such a, a beautiful job of sheltering at home and in place, in being public health, I continue to think of uh, the creativity and compassion that is pouring forth from each of you. And I'm so grateful for you. You are saving lives. And I have a message for you which begins with our praying with our full and open hearts, the Lord's Prayer. May God be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For this very brief Holy Weekend Easter message, I want to focus on one piece of Jesus' petition that he teaches us, what that we call the Lord's Prayer, and that is, give us this day our daily bread. For most of us, we do not have access in a direct way to the bread and the wine of the Eucharist, the Holy Communion. This is one of the things that uh, we've been struggling with, all of us in the Episcopal Church, all of us who love this sacrament and depend on it, uh, how to provide communion, how to receive communion. Uh, we know that the Holy Spirit is always with us. John V. Taylor, the late Bishop of Winchester back in the 60s, wrote a book called The Go-Between God, and that was a book about the Holy Spirit, who makes us all one, connects us to each other, no matter how isolated or alone physically we may be. And it is that God who meets our needs wherever we are and whatever condition we are. The desire, the desire to receive the nourishment of God is all that is necessary, and God meets us in the form of the Holy Spirit. So we are provided that nourishment. There is more, however, to, deep, to look deeply into this petition, give us this day our daily bread. I went back to an extremely powerful uh, interpretation of the Lord's Prayer by Neil Douglas Klotz, who uh, took the Aramaic form of it, the form that Jesus spoke in all likelihood, and has uh, not created a translation, but more an interpretation that uses the cloud of meanings around each word in the Aramaic of the Lord's Prayer. And this is how he renders the petition, give us this day our daily bread. Grant what we need each day in bread and insight, subsistence for the call of growing life. Give us the food we need to grow through each new day through each illumination of life's needs. Let the measure of our need be earthiness. Give all things simple, verdant, passionate. Produce in us, for us, the possible. Each only human step toward home lift up. Help us fulfill what lies within the circle of our lives. Each day we ask no more no less. Animate the earth within us. We then feel the wisdom underneath supporting all. Generate through us the bread of life. We hold only what is asked to feed the next mouth. Grant what we need each day in bread and insight. Years ago, I was taught that uh, in France, the uh, meaning of the meal 
uh, the shared food around a table was uh, not so much, not so much uh, the taking in of the physical sustenance, though it is necessary, but the conversation that is built on top of the sharing around the table. So food and insight and understanding. These things are what is necessary for life. They are together really the staff of life. This is not the bread of the Eucharist as such, but it is more like the bread of what we call from the earliest days of those who followed Jesus, calling themselves people who followed the way, the agape meal, the meal of love, that shared between people, taken within as a gift of God by each of us, alone, physically, or together. I know that some of you are lonely and maybe scared, and some of you are sick and ill. When I was a young priest in rural Virginia, there was a, a marvelous elderly priest, Larry Williams, who uh, had been retired for many years, but he was part of our clericus, our circle of clergy who gathered each month. And then after about a year, he um, actually physically located. He had been retired, as I said, for many years and moved to Florida. Shortly after that, I learned that he had uh, received a diagnosis of terminal cancer. I, I called him and said, Larry, I, I understand you're very ill and I'm, I'm concerned that you're alone. And he said, Mark, I'm never alone. The Holy Spirit is always with me. The Holy Spirit is always with you and nourishing you with insight and understanding, but also connecting you with all of the world. There is no one who is truly distant from you, no one who is removed from you. All are present with you in the ability to comfort and sustain you. But it is also true that you are with them and your love and your compassion, your prayers, are helping sustain them through their loneliness, their fear, and their illness as well. We pray sometimes in uh, evening prayer to shield the joyous, as well as to take care of those who are alone and weak, who watch at night, who suffer. It's both things. And uh, as, as we suffer, all of us suffer, but also as we rejoice, all rejoice. There is an amazing amalgam of all of this being true at the same time. Thomas Merton, the uh, great writer, contemplative activist, monk, uh, Cistercian monk of the 20th century, uh, first embraced his sequestered life uh, as a monk with his cell. He loved that. It was a, a kind of romantic vision for him. But later, as he became more and more activated by the Holy Spirit to serve in the world, to take on causes of justice, to partner with Martin Luther King and Thich Nhat Hanh and Daniel Berrigan and all kinds of other people to bring forth justice, he came to understand that the monk was never alone in his cell, the nun in her cell, you in your home, sheltering in place. We are always, through prayer, connected to each other. As I began this meditation, I want to end by saying that you are serving the world. You are bringing forth peace, justice, and health uh, by this very act of sheltering in place. Our government uh, leaders in California at the state and local level have taken difficult and, I think, courageous actions by issuing mandates that uh, impose um, undoubtedly uh, costly um, requirements on all of us. And you have been following those requirements. This is uh, going to wear on for a while. It's going to cost us more. There will be more deaths. There will be more economic loss. Uh, there will be jobs lost. Um, at the same time, this is necessary. As this wears on us, always seek the nourishment of the Holy Spirit. 
seek the nourishment of not only the sustenance you take in physically, but also the nourishment of understanding and insight given spiritually and given humanly to us. The Holy Spirit is always with us. Next week, through Holy Week and on Easter, whether we receive the bread and the wine of the Eucharist or not, and most likely for most of us not, we will still be truly fed. We will receive the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Amen. And now, the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the source of all being, the incarnate word, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever.